I class this as example A from page one in our unit one white packet. Uh, it talks about a square table seating four people. So that would be this table right here. Okay, and then if you push two of these tables together, you can seat six, as you see here. So as the one table slides in, uh, we have two more seats available. This guy right there and that seat right there. Uh, if you put a third table in, so we're making like a long banquet table, uh, we can then seat how many? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So one table seats four. Two tables can accommodate six people. Three tables can accommodate eight, and so on. So uh, the pattern basically goes like this. One table, four people. Two, six, three, eight. So a couple questions here. Um, how many people can sit at 10 tables? So basically, we would keep this pattern going for 10, 5, and then uh, 12, and so on. Uh, so how many people could we seat if we had 10 tables? So uh, basically, you could just continue the pattern on your calculator if you want. You could probably do this one in your head. Uh, keep adding 2 until you get to the 10th table. So. Uh, just for the calculator, for the sake of trying it, let's go ahead and uh, recap something that we did in class today. If you weren't here, you may have missed this, so it's a good time to go over it. Uh, to use the calculator for this concept known as recursion, which is basically completing this or continuing this pattern over and over again, you begin by entering your first number, which was four. So the first table accommodated four people. Then tell the calculator what you're adding every time. We're adding two people every time we add another table. So there you see your six people at, uh, at two tables, then eight, then 10. So that would be four tables. And then keep hitting enter uh, until you finally get to the 10th table. So four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. So 10 tables can accommodate 22 people. Next question, uh, let's see, how many tables would be needed to seat 32? Again, you can go back to the calculator. There are several ways to do these problems. We're just uh, touching upon one of them. Keep hitting enter and keep track of what table you're on. So we're on, uh, we would be on 11 tables there, 12, 13, 14, 15 tables in a straight line would be required to seat 32 people. So just keep track. And we get to the 15th stage there. And then finally, for example A, it says, write a recursive definition to find the number of people who can sit at any linear arrangement of square tables. So this is sort of the, uh, the, the new stuff, I guess, so to speak, for, for this unit. And it basically wants us to write what's called a recursive definition. And it works like this. We need to tell. We need to answer the question by telling us how many people were seated at stage one. So you always begin a recursive definition by stating how many you had at stage one. And that was right here, it was four. So it's kind of like saying if you started with one table, if you started with one table, how many people could sit there? And it would be four. So that's step one of a recursive definition, telling me where you start or how many people you start with. Stage two is to tell the reader how to get to the next stage. Uh, in class today, we called this now. Uh, UN stood for where you were now. So to define this sequence, you say, uh, you take where you are now by taking where you were previously, and the symbol for that is U, N minus one. This is the symbol for previous and you add two more people for every table that you add. All right, so this is known as a recursive definition for a sequence. It has two parts to it, telling us where you start and then how you get to the next stage. We'll see this a little bit more as we move through these next two examples uh, from 1.1.